In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a project for QPath and then how you can uh, define uh, the different annotations. So uh, now as I install QPath, as I, I now have two uh, shortcuts, um, the regular one and the one with the console. That can be useful when you, if you ever uh, come across some errors with the console, you'll have some messages. But most of the time, that won't be useful. So I'm going to actually just remove this, this uh, shortcut. And then so I can either uh, launch QPath here or launch QPath here as it's been installed. So if I type QPath, I have it here. But obviously, this one works as well. So first time you launch it, normally you have a message that asks you uh, how much uh, memory you want to allocate uh, to QPath, how much RAM you want to allocate. Uh, you can always change that later on if you go to Help, Show Setup Options. Here you have so the memory that's allocated, maximum memory. So in my case, it's 16 uh, gigabytes of RAM. I, I actually I have uh, 32 uh, gigs of, uh, of RAM total. So by default, QPath will allocate half of your RAM. Um, if you have a low amount of RAM, half, uh, like if you have you know, four, it's going to be really short uh, for some application. Eight, um, you'll be able to do analysis, if you, but in that case, you can't allocate more than four gigs of RAM because if you have other things that are running, it's going to uh, come critical very quickly. If you have more, like in my case, I have 32, so I could allocate 24. I still have eight gigs for the, for, you know, for any other application. So actually, I'm going to change that. But that's, you know, that's up to you. So I'm going to just put it uh, 24. And now I'm going to create a project. So you can create it uh, from the tab here, file, and you can do create project. But there's a, a simpler way to do it is uh, to um, create an empty directory. So I'm going to create here a new folder. And I'm going to uh, entitle QPath Workshop Project. So obviously, you name it the way you want. And when you have an empty uh, folder like this, you can drag it into QPath. And QPath is asking if you want to create a project from an empty directory. And then you can just say yes. And you have created a project. It's very important to create a project because there are many functionalities in QPath that only work when you are in a project. Uh, and obviously, everything you save, like if you train a classifier, either object or pixel classifier, then it's going to be saved in your uh, project. So if you don't have a project, you can't save them and so on. So it's really important. You know, first thing when you when you want to start on, on something new in QPath, you create a project and then you are in the right environment to do all your analysis. When you want to open images, again, you can just drag and drop. So here, uh, these are the two folders. So just if I go back, so this is uh, the Zenodo with all, all the images and the GitHub folder that I downloaded. So this is a folder from the GitHub with uh, so the PDF and the scripts and the, the scripts we'll use and the model that's been trained we'll use as well. So not yet. Yeah. Uh, and this is the directory where I put all the different images, so two in DPI. One, uh, one TIFF, which is about fluorescence, and only TIFFs uh, that are uh, HNE uh, images. So I'm going to open all these HNE images. So what I can do is select them all and then drag and drop them in QPath. So when you open new images, uh, QPath is asking you if you want, uh, so, you know, the name, where they are, and you can also um, change uh, select the types. That's the only thing you really need to do. And and I know these are uh, HNE, so I'm going to select Brightfield HNE. 
in Cupa is going to import them all. Right? I'm going to open uh, this one. And then you can, you, know, you can zoom in, zoom out. I'm going to put it full screen. It, it works better uh, also when it's full screen. So you can uh, navigate like this. You can zoom in and then like, navigate like this. So here I'm just using my mouse. You can also use the, you know, the space bar on the keyboard and then uh, do this. So that doesn't change, but that might be helpful when you have uh, annotations. Um, and you also have information about the images here. Uh, so as you can see, there's some uh, information missing. That's because the metadata has been uh, lost, which is really not good. Uh, I will. Uh, I would highly encourage you uh, to keep the metadata. Here is just to show you that it is possible to uh, have images without metadata. But obviously uh, now, for example, you don't know the resolution of your pixels, which might be really um, limiting uh, when you want to do some measurements. So then, you know, if you know the resolution, you can uh, you can know what are uh, different measurements, but uh, it'd be better to start from the beginning with uh, the right metadata. And we see that here we have uh, three different layers of, um, of pyramids for the pyramidal representation, three different resolutions, and, um, and so on. Uh, so if you go back to project, if you want to uh, change image, you need, so you can, if you click once, it doesn't change anything. So you need to double click and you can switch between images. So I'm just going to show you the different options you have with uh, the, uh, the annotations. Uh, so the first two uh, are pretty common. This is the rectangle. So you can just um, use your mouse you click to define the first point and then you keep clicking so you can change uh, the size and when you're done you just uh, release and you define you have defined your first annotation for all annotation when they are selected by default they are, red, they are yellow if you want to unselect you can uh, just double click outside if you want to select it you can double click inside you also have a tab about annotations that you can use. So, for example, if I double click inside, if I go there and just select the annotation, I can select it again. So, this is the rectangle. So, you also have uh, shortcuts. So, R is for rectangle and O is for oval. Work the same way. All right. So, if I double click outside and select it, uh, if you select it again, you can then change it. You know, very quite straightforward. You then have the line. So in that case, you do it the same way. You click to define the first point, and then when you're good, you release it. You have the polygon. So you can, again, click there or uh, type P. And the polygon, you define the first point, the second point third point, four point, fifth, etc. And when you're done, you double click. All right. Uh, you can also use the polygon as a hand-free tool. So if you have uh, like a, a tablet or something like this, so if I select again polygon, if you keep clicking, then you're just drawing what you want. When you're done, you release it, and your annotation is defined. Um, then you have the, the, the V, which is a uh, it's a line, but it's a segmented line. So in that case, you define first point, second, third, fourth, etc. And when you're done, you double click. All right. Now we have uh, two of the notations that um, depends on the resolution you're at. So the brush, the brush actually uh, is just a brush, but as you can see, it's pretty large when I have when I'm uh, 
at that level of resolution. If I zoom out, it's going to be even larger. If I zoom in, then, you know, it's going to be smaller as well. It depends the resolution you're at, which, which makes sense. Um, with this tool, uh, you can, uh, if you want to modify it, if it's selected, if you're inside, you can then increase your annotation. Now, if you want to uh, modify to remove some region, you can uh, type on, on the Alt key, Alt like Alter, and you go from outside, and you can go in. The annotation needs to be uh, selected, because if it's not selected, so for example, if I click on the M as move, I can then move my, um, so on in, I can navigate in my image. If I double click, I unselect it. Now, if I um, draw a new branch, you know, so like here, if I, so if I start from the inside, I'm going to modify it. If I go outside, I'm going to create a new one. If I want to uh, uh, change it from the outside, I need to uh, type on Alt and then go in. And if I, if I want to move and I don't want to add a new uh, annotation, because here uh, I would add a new annotation, you see the brush is still on. So I can either uh, uh, type on, on, the, on the space bar, which might be convenient because in that case, if I want to add a new brush, I, I, it's still selected when I release the space bar and I can add a new one, or I can type on M, like move, and then navigate in the image. The last, uh, the last annotation is the magic wand, and this also depends on the resolution. So if I'm like, a I'm going to move here, move here. So if I, I'm at that resolution, if I select it, I can uh, type on W, like want. And you see here, it's quite convenient because I can just select this area, which is common. So it's based on uh, regions that are uh, that share some uh, image properties, and it's going to put them together. And so same way, yeah, so here it's a bit uh, too large. If you type Control Z, you can um, undo the last thing you did. If I zoom in a little bit, I might be able to see get this area. So you see how it works. That's not this, the only tool that works with this magic wand. Um, same thing. If if it's selected, you go from the inside. You can add. Sometimes you see it's not that easy to add. It depends how similar uh, the region is, like this. And you can also alter it. If I go from the outside, I type out, and then I'm going to be able to alter it. So like, for example, I want to remove these guys. It might be easier if I just remove And so, I didn't include this small region. I can add this, etc. Of course, if you zoom even more, then you can try to add just small region. Maybe it's supposed to touch. Yeah. You see, when, when at that resolution, I added all of these guys. And if I zoom in, I can then add just a few ones. I added a new one, so you see, it's, uh, I, I didn't add on this previous one. If I wanted to add on this one, I need to select it. So if I type in M, double click on it, and then I'm going to start from the inside. You get the idea. And so uh, then you also have measurements that are associated to each of them. So if we go back in there, Basically, we have two kinds of annotations. Here we have uh, the annotation with the wand, the magic wand, with the brush, with the polygon, with the rectangle, with the oval, which are all, all areas. And so for, for these guys, we have the centroid. So X and Y coordinates are the centroid that you can, so when, when 
one uh, condition is selected, you can see it here, the area and the perimeter. So I can switch you know, from there. I can also select here, and then I have what I, what I want. Sometimes it's also interesting if you are zooming uh, like with, with, a, with a very high resolution, you can also select these guys. And if you double click on it, then uh, you, you, you go at that region. So it might be also useful. So all of these annotations have, again, centroid uh, coordinates, area, and perimeter. And then we also have uh, lines like this. And of course, we don't have an area or perimeter in that case, but we have a length. So here, everything is in pixels because, again, I didn't have, um, I didn't have um, metadata, so I don't know the resolution of my pixel. Uh, if you have this information in your metadata, then it will be in micrometers, for example. You can um, you can remove uh, your annotation. So either you do a right click, and then you see here you have an annotation, or you can um, you can even so let's just have a look at this. We can set the properties. You can add a name, so like over one. You can change the color. Even though uh, we'll see later on, we can add classes to annotations. And so it makes more sense to have colors for classes. But if I want, I can put it in line. You can even add a description. And you can lock it. So then it's not possible to change these properties. So here, it's still yellow because it's selected. But if I unselect it, now it is in line. And, and there's an A. Uh, and the size of the name depends on the resolution. If I want to remove it, I can uh, select it here and do delete. And then uh, there's a window that pops up to ask me if I really want to delete this object. You can uh, you can also select several annotations with the control uh, when you when you type control. You can select them all here, and I can delete them all. Ask me if I want to delete them all, and that's what I want to do.